Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Make Your Phone Sales Up to 500% More Effective. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. DealerOn was named the top-rated website provider by Driving Sales in 2011, and DealerOn customers were winners of the Spring 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. That's right, a lead guarantee program. So if your website company isn't guaranteeing you leads, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Pogo Parr as our presenter today. Pogo Parr is the Vice President of Century Interactive's Automotive Division. After owning and operating Pogo's Seaside Grill for five years, Pogo Parr dove headfirst into the automotive industry with Trader Publishing in 1995. His career advanced quickly from running efforts in the state of Virginia to West Coast Regional Director for Auto Trader Products, Auto Mart, and Auto Mercado. In January 2009, Pogo joined CallSource as Vice President of Automotive and led this division to tremendous growth in the tele telephony space. In May 2012, Pogo joined Century Interactive, a leading automotive call tracking and telephone consulting company. And like I said before, he's the Vice President of Automotive. He can be reached at pogo at centuryinteractive.com. Now during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Century Interactive are offering up oh, a fantastic prize today for one lucky attendee. What is it? 60 Days of Car Wars. It's a newly launched automotive gaming piece. Car Wars includes call categorization, scoring, website tracking, alert notifications, gaming, coaching, and inbound and outbound call tracking. Sounds totally cool, right? And it's a $3,000 value. All you have to do is stay tuned and answer a simple question toward the end of today's presentation. The first one to write in with the correct answer will be winning this awesome prize today. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. And today we'll randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also win some Google prizes. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's learn how to make your phone sales up to 500% more effective. Mr. Pogo Parr, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you to all my great friends at Dealer On. Um, it's great to be here, Eliana. I'm really excited. I'm uh, actually not traveling today and based in my home office in Southern California. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm over here on the East Coast, so I think we got the whole country covered now. And I just wanted to welcome you, of course, and tell you thank you so much for getting involved with the Dealer on Weekly Educational Webinar Series. And, you know, um, you and I talked about this offline, of course. But, you know, last week we had David Kane who talked yep. about how to make a great first impression when you get that sales phone call. And, you know, this is great because this is a continuation. So now you get these phone sales, how do you make them even more effective? So I'm really glad you're doing this, a great follow-up to last week's webinar. So what are we going to actually be learning today? Why don't you tell everyone? Well, great. Well, first of all, again, thank you. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the session uh, one, thank you for attending, and, and really the goal here is to bring you, everybody on the call, some, some added value uh, for you personally and what you can take back to your business. So we're going to touch on three things today. First of all, we're going to look at, at what's going on in the marketplace right now, understand the nature of the call in 2012, and understand actually at the dealer level what's happening with all the inbound calls. And then we're simply going to transition that into making life easier. Where is all the inbound calls being 
being housed. Um, we're going to talk about CRM integration and how that can simplify your business and ensure that all of your leads uh, are maintained within the CRM. And then, Eliana, as we talked about, we're going to offer the Car Wars package today. And really what we're going to talk about in that section is all of the dealers, I, mean, I can walk in, you know, 100 dealers, and all dealers have done a fantastic job of creating great standards within the dealership. The first impression is outstanding. Uh, somebody greets you immediately and then takes care of all your needs. And what we're going to talk about in the, in the third section is really creating those standards that the dealers have done such a good job of with showroom traffic of how to correlate that back onto the phone ops. That sounds like a work we'll have to get to a lot of stuff today, so let's get started. <laughs> and then, of course, at the end of the presentation, we're going to have a question and answer session. But if you come up with a question in the middle of the presentation, send it along, and I'll hold on to it until we're ready to ask those questions. So let's get started. Great. Thank you so much. Well, hey, again, welcome, everybody, and thanks for being here. So the first slide we're going to take a peek at is what's happening with the mobile factor and the effects on call volumes. As we know, the call volume uh, really took off uh, when the business began uh, in the early days with traditional advertising. Early to mid-90s, we saw a significant drop-off on the phone traffic to the dealerships. And, and as we know, all that traffic at that point was being, was being pushed through emails and autotrader.com and cars.com as they created this huge opportunity and, and all dealers created this huge uh, Internet division within their stores. But the great thing about it today, we've seen the trend of phone calls uh, at a high level um, decrease when the emails took over. But we're back in the environment today where smartphones, as this shows, smartphones and mobile phones are taking over the computers. So phone calls are on the rise again at a high level. And uh, we definitely expect it to, to stay there. Um, as we all know, consumers now are doing a lot of shopper, shopping on the phone. And a lot of them will actually just click the call. And even today, I'm calling uh, from my home office on my smartphone. And I'm assuming a lot of the dealers out there today, if they're not on their smartphone on this call, they're probably going to be glancing down at it, checking some apps, possibly email, and sending a text or two. So the first thing we're going to look at is we all know phone calls are on the increase, and we expect it to stay there. What's happening when these phone calls are coming into the store? So here at Century Interactive, um, <clears throat> we've been in business for 20 years, heavily in the automotive space for the last 10. Um, and some of the data that we're going to look at today is um, from some dealer groups that we, we do business with. Right now, we roughly have 1,700 rooftops on our platform. We have five of the top nine dealership dealer groups uh, do business with us. So this data we're going to look at today is going to be a uh, live data based from some of the dealers that, that are currently on our platform. So what we did over the last couple of months is we took 342 dealers and we, and we did a deep, deep dive on what's happening with their data. We uh, looked at 2 million inbound calls, and then we also took a look at a little over 6 million of the outbound calls. And, and, and this is what we're finding. So <clears throat> as we know, a lot of dealers right now, it, it's really challenging them to listen to all their calls. And out of those 2 million calls that we looked at, only 24% of those calls were prospect calls. And that equals to basically um, 480,000. So we know one of the challenges in the space is that uh, the front-end managers get so many calls, roughly about 60% of those calls are going to be service-oriented. Uh, 25 to 30%, generally speaking, are going to be service, and the rest are going to be non-prospect. So one of the major challenges in the space right now is, is actually buckling the sales prospect calls so the managers have, have the ability and the time to get straight to what's important to them. <clears throat> and then another thing that we've noticed, uh, Eliana, which was pretty, um, pretty eye-opening, right now only 39% of the inbound calls uh, fails to reach a qualified employee. So right now, it, it, it the average store, only 61% of all sales prospects actually get involved, uh, actually get sent to a live agent who can help answer their questions, which is rather surprising. That is surprising. Yeah. I, I know, um, you know, I was telling David Kane last week, and I think you and I talked about it a little bit too. Uh, you know, I recently had a car buying experience where I knew exactly what car I wanted. I called... Yep. You know, five dealerships who I saw online, they had the car I wanted. I just wanted to get the particulars and, and see if they actually had the colors I wanted and could I get in there to see it, you know? And yep, exactly. I hardly well, ever... Well, I'm to Elio, this is the question, though. Out of the, out of the 480,000 prospect calls that came in out of the 2 million, um, let's pull the audience real quick. Let's find out, on average, how many of the inbound calls... Let's just pull the audience, Eliana. 
Okay, let's pull the audience. Audience, we already need your help. So please, when you get a chance, look at your screen right now and help us out. We want to know what percentage of inbound sales calls is your team requesting an appointment? So this is really interesting stuff. So select one of the following answers. Is it 20%? Do you think 30% of the time your sales team is asking for the appointment? Is it 40%? Is it over 40%? Or maybe that's not something you track and you don't really know. And that's fine too. We just want to know. We want, we want honest answers to this question. It's really going to help us out. And, and just so you know, I did not reach the person I was trying to reach almost all the time. <laughs> so um, that last stat that you put up was pretty interesting. But, um, yeah, and, it, and, and we're definitely going to take a deep dive at that. Um, it's going to be interesting to, to, to hear the dealers and the percentage of the uh, appointments that they're requesting on inbound calls. Because what our stats show us, and this may be a little surprising to some people, um, out of the 2 million calls that we monitored on the inbound, keep in mind only 480,000 of those were actually sales prospect calls. But out of those 480,000 calls, this was, this was the outcome. I, so only 22% of the time the employee actually requested the appointment. What? 22%? Yeah. Shouldn't it be like a hundred? <laughs> well, let's see what our Great. audience said. Our audience, Great. our audience has voted. We closed the poll. We're sharing the results right now. So if you look at your screen, you'll see the results. Fifty-six percent of today's audience tell me that over forty percent of the time they're asking for the appointment. Which is great. Well, good for those Which is great. 20, 26 percent of the, today's audience, they're not sure. They don't, they don't really track it. Um, Fifteen percent said it's about 20 percent. No one said 30 percent. And a small percentage, four percent, said it was about 40 percent. I do want to point out, one of our attendees wrote in. He said, right now it's over 40 percent, but it wasn't a month ago. It was probably more like 20 percent, and it is fixable. So I want to thank AJ for that comment mm. on that one. So. So there you have it. What did you think about that? Hey, AJ, I hope this is the AJ I know. And if it is, <laughs> hello to you. And, and, and good job for improving that. How uh, many AJs think, are there in the auto industry, Pogo? <laughs> hey, I would say not a lot. Hey, and this is the key, guys. This is the cool thing about it. And what AJ said is, hey, man, I went from 20% to 40%. It is fixable. And throughout the session today, we're really going to talk about how to change behavior and, and sustain it. And Eliana, the 22% is fairly normal, and, and it seems like a lot of the feedback came in on that range as well. Um, we really feel this, this, this number, uh, this is reality, but this number is going to change significantly over time. Um, and, and as you said earlier today, uh, when you called the dealership, you knew all the information. You wanted to know if the vehicle was there, if they had the color, because if they did, you wanted to get in there and make a purchase. That's so absolutely historically, right. Historically, <laughs> yeah, you know, historically why this number is so low, um, in the olden days, dealers wanted to get name and phone numbers. So they would, they, they would just add a habit to, hey, let me get your name and phone number and call you back. So they would potentially go touch the car. One reason why they did that, the main reason, is so they could capture name and phone number and keep that in their database. But we have to do keep in mind, in the environment of today, the consumer is so savvy and so educated. They already know, they've already, they know the price. They've seen 18 photos of the car, a video, uh, a VIN number, and potentially already pulled a, a car fax. So when that consumer can get information with the click of a mouse, when they pick up that phone call, you know, they want quick information back. And what they're looking for, they're not really looking for a lot of questions right now. They're, they want to be invited in. So we think at this 22%, we, see, we feel over time this is significantly going to change due to the, how the consumers are shopping and how they're gathering information. They're gathering with a click of mouse. When they call your store, they want information back quickly as well. One benefit, though, Eliana, of them, of them touching the car and calling them back is it's much easier for dealers to be prepared and do a much better job on the outbound call. So what we're encouraging guys to do is to be on your feet, be prepared for the inbound calls, and really start monitoring, managing, and engaging your guys to force to ask the appointment on the first call. I will say this, look at. The, five, the five phone calls I made, not one person asked me for the appointment. Not one. I'm assuming they probably got your name and number and uh, were, were expecting to call you back. Uh, two of them got my name and number, tried to call me back. Two, I had to leave a message for some person who wasn't available. One had the information about the car, and I asked him, when can I come and see it? He didn't ask me. <laughs> Guess which one I bought the car yep. from. 
<laughs> so. Hey, and this is also the thing, as all the dealers on this call will probably agree to, dealers know everything that happens on, on the walk-up traffic, on the, when somebody walks into their store. Dealers can recite and quote very quickly how many ups they had for the day, how many demos, and how many write-ups. And one of our goals is, is, is to allow the dealers to know those same metrics and all that information with all phone ups as well. But the other interesting thing, since only 22% of those people ask for an appointment, 30% when they ask for the appointment, the caller accepted. Um, another great stat here is only 12 declined. So it tells us, I think we are on something here, that now the consumer has all that information at their fingertips at a click of a mouth. By the time they make that call, they will rarely decline that appointment. And normally when they're declining at this point, they're setting a soft appointment. They're given a loose time of when they may come into the store or a loose date. And we're going to talk about how to manage that as we go through this presentation. Um, another interesting stat was 86% of the 6 million outbound calls never reached the intended party. And one thing we're going to talk about today, we talked about the, the evolution of the phone call to the email, and now we're back to the, the, the call is king. Um, one thing that we feel dealers need to keep in mind is as as in the mid-90s when replying to those emails was very time sensitive. Keep in mind that same formula and same strategy now needs to apply to the phone calls. Consumers in today's markets, when they call you, they're giving you permission and telling you how they want to communicate with you. So we're highly encouraging dealers to when those consumers give the thumbs up and they call you and they've already established how they want to communicate, that the outbound piece is going to be more important and much more effective as we move in. Uh, move into the future. So this is pretty interesting. So what we're looking at right here, guys, is, is we took all that data and we broke it down into a reporting pod. And what this reporting pod is, is, is just a duplicate of the numbers we spoke at a little bit earlier, but a little bit more detail. So this 61% is telling us that um, only 61% of the calls ultimately connected to a qualified agent. Um, here on the next slide, we're going to talk about what happened to the 39%. This is good for benchmarking with the store. As you can see, it seems like this number right here is relatively low. And we do get a lot of feedback when we go out into the marketplace and we start presenting that only 61% of the prospects actually connected with a qualified agent. But the key here, as you can see, these are all dealers within the platform right now. And they're really performing you know, a little below average, but not significantly. So more than likely, the average dealership, these are the numbers right now that uh, that your prospects are connected with one of your sales agents. And as you can see down below, this is the mean time for the caller to connect with a qualified agent. So this is when the call comes into the store, the receptionist picks up, we start taking that time right there, and then we're monitoring how long before that sales agent will pick up the call. And as you can see, 38 seconds. Um, you know, normally, you know, that, that, that's probably the average right now we're seeing. The real good uh, dealerships are, are, are under 10 seconds right now. And as you can see, as far as the average on all dealerships, you know, they're within a reasonable time frame. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the 39%, you know, what the heck is that? And I know that's a hard number to believe. And what we're talking about right now, guys, is this is the 39% that did not get connected to a qualified agent. So what happened to all of those calls? As you can see, that 39% is broken down in detail right here. So 23 reached the voicemail and did not leave a message. Um, Eliana, this is what happened to you. So you fall into this 21%, <laughs> reach the voicemail, left the message. And I think you, I think when we had this conversation, you said one of those messages took up to two weeks to return your call. Is that correct? Two weeks. And by the way, I bought the car the next day, but two weeks yeah. later. And I, I, when I got the phone call, I was like, are you kidding me? Two weeks later? <laughs> I didn't even bother yeah. telling him I work with the auto industry. <laughs> Yeah, so, so guys, we really need to transition the thought process into how, how diligent and how effective all dealers were with replying to emails in a timely manner. And I do remember um, David Kane spoke uh, last week when he highly encouraged that he feels eight seconds is, is the time that, that dealers should reply to an email. So pretty interesting. Also, I think David had a couple of other interesting stats that the average consumer is going to visit uh, 13 sites. But keep in mind the key here, the average consumer is only going to visit 1.3 dealerships before purchase. And that tells us a lot of information. 
But remember what we talked about earlier. They're going to do their research. They're going to know as much as that sales rep answering the call. Invite them in. And since they're only, since they're only visiting 1.3 dealerships in today's environment, their decisions are normally being made via the phone and their research. So the other 39% is broken down, uh, hung up while on hold during 30 plus seconds of ring time. 18% um, of these guys we can kind of throw out the window because they were probably wrong numbers, nobody there, or jump calls. And one thing I do want to point out, which is pretty impressive, I think, if we look down at the bottom right here, um, what this tells us is 19% of these missed consumers received a return phone call. So only 19%. Think about that, guys. Think about your emails coming into your email box during the heyday when emails were king, and you only returned 19% of those emails. I think we knew what, know what would have happened to that consumer and probably know what would have happened to the long term of that business. And the other key feature here is that actually 38% of those, so they definitely had a, they had a pretty dire need, 38% of those actually called the dealer back and tried to inquire again to get their questions answered. So some pretty telling, telling information, and the question is, is how do you fix it, right? How do you know it and how do you fix it? Because I think as we trend forward, part of the goal here is, is as I mentioned earlier, for you guys to know as much about your phone up traffic and manage it as you do your walk-up. Because I know everybody on this call does a fantastic job and can recite their stats uh, rather quickly back to anyone. All right, so as we evolve from uh, phone calls with traditional newspaper styles, billboards, um, car magazines, we all know the consumer has really transitioned uh, to the digital side, and so is your budget. And when I first joined the automotive business, uh, in the early 90s, call tracking was pretty much the coolest thing uh, in, the, in the space. And keep in mind, call tracking is still cool. And why it's still cool is because the value in a lot of dealers' eyes has diminished, but the overall value to your business has actually increased due to the fact that the call volume is increasing. And, and I know the call tracking business hasn't evolved significantly over the past couple of years, um, but now we have some new technology that we really think will help you guys. And there's a couple guys in the call tracking space doing this right now. We have a product out, and also another great company has a uh, Mongoose Metric has a nice product out. Because historically, what we've heard in the space is, "Hey, man, you know, I know how many, I know how many impressions I'm getting. I know how many clicks I'm getting." And most dealers are looking at their conversion rate from those clicks to web form fills. So a piece of that bridge is missing, right? So what we want to look at is how many impressions. How many clicks? How many web form for, uh, how many web form conversion? How many web form fills am I getting? And also, right, the call is king. How many of these keywords are actually converting into phone calls? So we've recently launched, or this has been around for a good number of years with Century Interactive, and what we call this is our web analyzer. Um, so what we have the ability to do here with this web analyzer piece is we have a dynamic number on the website that replaces with each unique user. Um, and we can actually track keywords to conversions. So as we see right here, these are some of the keywords. This is an example of the customer of ours who have given us permission to, to show some of this data, which is Showcase Honda. So as you can see right here, guys, what these are the keywords that the dealer is, 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 is buying. He's purchasing these keywords for pay-per-click. And this keyword Honda, as you can see right here, it created 1,100 unique sessions, it, excuse me, sessions. It created 748 unique sessions. And that keyword showcase Honda actually converted 82 phone calls. So now with, the, with this web tracking piece, keyword tracking level, you have the ability to look at your keywords and determine not only if those keywords have site conversions or chat conversions, but now you also have the ability to determine if that keyword also has a call conversion. And then the great thing about this, guys, is you can get the total keyword conversion, and we're going to combine the call, the chat, and the site conversion for every keyword for you. And then we can also get a little bit broader with this information. And this is really cool, man. So remember, call tracking is cool. It brings a lot of value, and, and, and we are evolving this piece. So this is the referring website source. As you can see right here, so what this is telling us, and some questions we get about this is, hey, man, is this going to affect my Google ranking? Um, the answer is no. 
you will have different phone numbers uh, placed on your website by a unique user. But in all reality, Google is going to see one anchor number, and that anchor number will not change. So at the end of the day, this will have no ill effect whatsoever on your Google, MSN, Yahoo ranking. So the great thing about it here, it gives a much deeper dive. Uh, first of all, let's just look at autotrader.com. Um, so autotrader.com, you know, phone calls are declining, right? Impressions are declining a bit, but they're still bringing tremendous value. Now you have the ability to look at the conversion rate, not only how many people Autotrader sent to your website, but how many of those people that Autotrader sent to your website, how many converted into a phone call? So for this particular uh, dealer right here, autotrader.com, pretty impressive. Brought 1,600 sessions, uh, 1,200 unique. And out of those 1,200 unique people that started their search on autotrader.com, that linked on the link to the dealer's website and then went shopping on this dealer's website, uh, created 43 phone calls, 12 site conversions of a total conversion of 4.9%. So this is a real easy process. All we do is add a Java, JavaScript to your site, and uh, we tag each page, and we also tag each web form fill. So we have the ability to look at the all-inclusive conversion of the site and the keywords. Also, as you can see up here, guys, you have the ability to see what Google's doing for you and your direct main site. So when somebody is the direct domain, they just went to the browser and actually typed in your website. For Google, for an example, two things could have happened here. They could have went to Google and uh, either typed in your dealership or went to Google and typed in a keyword and then clicked on that particular keyword to get to your site. So if you have any questions on this, please just, just bring them out, and we hope to answer those. So another positive about this integration, and keep in mind uh, there are a couple guys doing this in the space right now that do a very good job at it. Um, one advantage right here is we also have the ability to integrate these conversions into Google AdWords. So simply now, if you're managing your SEM and SEO, mainly your SEM for this particular uh, Google AdWords, you can go to Google AdWords, and you can optimize your conversion by phone calls uh, on Google AdWords. So it's a real simple process, very easy to do. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or if we can assist anybody uh, with this product. OK, so I think this is pretty cool, man. So everybody spends a lot of money on generating opportunities. Um, the first thing that we want to do is really, really highly encourage everybody to integrate these prospects into the CRM. Um, as, as we travel across the country, Right now, only about 30% of dealers actually integrate all their call tracking data into their CRM. And there are some significant advantages to that. Um, one advantage to that is, is, is pushing all your call data. And all the guys in the call tracking space have the ability to do that right now. I think we all know the players who is, who's calling, you know, CallBright, CallSource, and of course, Century Interactive. Please work with your your, your call tracking rep and your CRM to push all this data into the CRM. And here shortly we're going to look at what that data may look like. Um, another thing that we see in the, in the business right now in the space is that a lot of dealers have fragmented call tracking platforms. So autotrader.com may be issuing a number, uh, cars.com may be issuing a number, and so on and so forth. Please control that data. Because once you control that data, it allows you the ability to manage it and to ensure all of that is going to be pushed directly to the CRM. And why pushing that CRM is so important is because a lot of the times when we are cross-referencing prospect calls to the CRM, there's normally a delta of about 30% where that sales agent just has made a conscious decision not to enter that phone up into the CRM. And think about it, guys. If I feel I have a soft lead, if I'm working at a dealership, why, am I, why would I want to go enter that into the CRM? Because the only thing I know that's going to happen is my manager is going to hold me accountable to work that lead. So if this is integrated and pushed to your CRM, you take that question mark out of the rep's hands if he should enter it or not, and it's logged manually, excuse me, it's logged uh, by ADF XML feed. The other thing, control your data, make sure the vendor's not. Um, know your customer. If all this is pushed into the CRM, a lot of the call tracking companies and the CRM, they'll laugh, they'll, they will push this. Uh, this, this information, if, a, if, if the lead's already in there, if this person has already purchased a car from you, 
that lead will be grouped with that particular person. So you have a story if that person's been a repeat, or you can determine if he's a new customer. Also, a lot of a, a lot of people in the space right now are heavily tracking emails and cell phones. You, if all this is pushed into your CRM, it gives you the ability to determine if you're collecting this data or not. Also, it allows you to rank your traffic hot or not and determine who to follow up with uh, for that morning or that week. And when you push stuff to your CRM, this is a screenshot of basically what it's going to look like depending on what, uh, what CRM you're using. This is a screenshot for Dealer Socket. We have a great partnership with Dealer Socket. And what this does is I'll just start over here. This is where the, the prospect, this is his phone number. As you can see, this particular consumer, he started at Craigslist, and then he went from Craigslist to Showcase Honda. So the referring source right here is going to be Craigslist. He started his shopping on Craigslist and then clicked on an icon that sent him to showcasehonda.com. As you can see, it was a phone up down here. And the cool thing about it is all you need to do is simply click on the work notes here, and it's going to populate a little bit more robust data. Again, it's going to confirm uh, the source was Showcase Honda, the referring source was Craigslist, and also a, a little bit deeper dive of how we can combine all of that web tracking data about that customer. This is the full story of the shopper, and this entire story uh, can absolutely be pushed into any CRM. You know, keep in mind, guys, as I mentioned a couple of times already, um, all the call tracking companies have the ability to push this uh, data into the CRM with a simple ADF XML feed, so please do reach out to them. Uh, I think it's a, a great practice, the best practice that all dealers should be should be following. And I'll just go over this real quickly right here. This is actually what you're going to see into the CRM, and this gives the full story of what that consumer did. As you can see, that consumer was Carlos. We can determine that Carlos went to Google. Carlos ain't Google. He typed in Honda Accord Scottsdale. Over here, it gives us the story that it was a paid ad. As you can see, it was a Google AdWords. The great thing about this guy is this dynamic web tracking feed will also track uh, uh, paid clicks, but also it will determine how your site's being optimized, because we will also fo follow the organic clicks as well all the way through. As we can see, when Carlos called, the cool thing about it, Carolyn picked up the call. Hey, check this out. This store answered the call uh, in nine seconds. Wow, pretty impressive, right? Good operator with very efficient methods. Um, the talk time was nine minutes. And one thing up here that's pretty interesting is that uh, here you have the ability, of course, you can listen to the call, but the key here, what we're finding is a lot of the meat and potatoes of the call is actually happening in the last 90 seconds of that call. So now you have the ability to go up here. If you, listen, if you want to listen to the entire call, that's great. But more importantly, you can scroll this bar over, excuse me, and uh, just listen to as much or little of that call as you would like. And as we talked about the ability to look at the full story right here, as we can tell, um, Carlos received two outbound phone calls from Carolyn, and the first call lasted roughly a minute. The second call lasted roughly two minutes. So great follow-up for Carolyn to call back. And also, now this is a deep dive on what this consumer did prior to making a phone call. We talked earlier, a little bit earlier about, about that referring source and about the keyword tracking. So we do know, again, that Carlos went to Google, he typed in Honda Accord Scottsdale. He actually clicked on the keyword, and this is what he did once he shopped on the site. As we can see, Carlos went to the home page for 11 seconds. He looked at used car inventory for only 7 seconds, and he was obviously pretty dialed into that Honda Accord because it also matches, right, his keyword. And then the cool thing here, as you can tell, that keyword actually triggered a phone call, and that phone call lasted a little bit over 2 minutes. So what this does, guys, is it really gives you the full story of what that consumer did prior to making the phone call. Now, so your follow-up calls really allow you to be a little bit more engaged. It determines what vehicle he looked at. If he looked at multiple vehicles on your site, this, this story would also tell it. It would list every vehicle he looked at. Now you have the ability to make that outbound phone call with some, with some mean, meaningful questions. Excuse me, Pogo? Also, yes. I'm sorry, we got a question in from Andrew. He, he wanted to know where this slide, this information that's on the slide, where is that from? Is that from Century Interactive's portal or is that from DealerSocket? 
Yeah, so, so this is actually going to be, this is a link that we send to every CRM. So this, this, this is the information that we gather that we're going to push to the CRM. This oh. example that we're looking at right now was a, was a dealer socket example. But this piece, this slide you're looking at right here, no matter what CRM you're using, um, uh, like, like Filtry Interactive, but like most call tracking companies, have the ability to push this data to any and every CRM. That is pretty cool. Andrew, I hope that answered your question. I'm sorry, Pogo, to interrupt. Please continue. Hey, please. You know, anytime, because um, we're about to get to some outbound stuff that's fairly new to the business, and that keyword tracking stuff is relatively new as well. So if anybody has any technical questions or just any questions at all, please, please, anytime. Thank you. And then, and then check this out, guys. So, right, there's a lot of always pieces missing to the puzzle when you're looking at consumers and prospects. Why didn't they buy? What happened? Did we call them back? So when we push this to the CRM, we're also going to add some additional notes. And the additional notes are very simple. Live conversation, yes. Was it an inventory call? It was. We talked about earlier that, that out of those 2 million calls that we reviewed, only 24% or 480,000 of those were prospect calls. So imagine you sitting at your desk weeding through 2 million calls to find 24% of it. One thing that we're going to help the dealers do is we're going to categorize calls by sales calls. So now it's real quick. As you can see, we sent this through a human attic, a piece that we've developed. We can tell that the, the, the consumer called in. They asked about an inventory piece. Hey, wow, look at this. The dealership requested an appointment. They did. Nice job. And let's look what happened. The consumer, customer loosely agreed to come in with no specific day and time. Hmm. I know what's going to happen there. What's no going to happen? <laughs> it's going to be a no-show. What? Why? It's going to be a no-show. Because what we find with, there's roughly right now, and we'll get to a little bit more of this data, but we're finding roughly about 50% of the appointments are going to be firm, and about 40% of the appointments are going to be soft. Soft appointments have a very likelihood to show. Soft uh, hard appointments obviously increase significantly if the ref and or the manager can pinpoint the day and the time. Gotcha. We'll get by that in a minute, though. By the way, our friend AJ wrote in, and he caught something I didn't catch before. He said he's confused. On this CRM example, the top shows the talk time is 9 minutes and 50 seconds, but the click yeah. trail shows that it's 151 seconds. Do you see? You know, AJ, that's a good catch, man. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. <laughs> He's quick, that AJ. You can't get anything He's quick. AJ, him. you weren't supposed to bring that up, especially <laughs> if you're my friend. I didn't. I thought maybe you had an answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I right. thought maybe it was because 151 we, seconds until they reached the, the person they were supposed to no, talk to. No. Hey, guys, so my background is this. Um, trader a long time, ran the auto trader businesses on the West Coast, was at call source for three and a half years, helped build that organization. I've been at Century Interactive for just over three months. So I am, I'm still, you know, I'm in the process of, of, of learning this data as well. So there is a solid answer to that question, AJ, and I assure you right after this I will, I, I will create clarity for that. But thank you. And, thank you. Uh, so, hey, thank you. So, hey, we worked really hard to create, right? So this is, this is the purchase funnel, the shopping funnel. So we know what consumers do. They're all online looking at things, web appearance, what's going on, do they have the cars I like. This is the key, guys, the engagement filter, because we do know one thing for sure. If the engagement filter, if this, if you do a great job here, the byproduct of this particular filter is a customer. So as we talk about here, initial response, right? How is it? Quality of the response and transparency of the communication. And when I'm talking about this, I'm moving forward to the response of following up with that customer. So that being said, Eliana, I'd like to do another poll, please. 
I think that's a great time to do another poll. Let's do the audience on the app now. Yeah, sure. let's do that right now. If everyone could please look at your screen. We need your help. We want to know, are you holding your sales team accountable for outbound phone calling? So, is it heck yeah or is it no, not really? <laughs> and I know that everyone has a different way of doing things with their sales team, you know, um, so we want to know. Right? Inquiring minds want to know? Um, when we get Absolutely. a majority, yeah, when we get a majority of the votes, we're going to close the poll and share the results. And it's during these poll questions, I always wish I had some background music, you know, like like Jeopardy music and Pogo. You can provide that right now if you wouldn't mind. If, if, if I could sing, <laughs> I assure you, I would right now. You would. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you're off the hook because look, we're going to close the poll and share the results. So our audience is so awesome. 62% of today's audience says, heck yeah, they are accountable for outbound phone calling. 38% say no, not really. So what do you think about that? Got it. Hey, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think that falls into the industry average because as we look right now, 42% nationally call the customer back and 54% in, in of the mystery leads uh, were called back as well. So. Yeah, that is pretty close. These stats, these stats equal pretty much what the customers, what the feedback was from the dealers. Hey, guys, we encourage you to, to step up the outbound piece. And I, I, I would just monitor and evaluate the outbound piece similar to how you used to manage replying to emails. And you probably still are holding your Internet guys pretty accountable to get timely response. Um, so I would take that same mindset and transition the response time back on outbound equal to your emails. And, and also the interesting thing here about this is don't lose sight. So this is an example of a store. See, as you can see, their main website number actually uh, generated 486 phone calls. And the outbound caller ID, guys, generated 366. Normally, what we'll see is that outbound ID number either always be in the number one or number two spots of what's generating the most phone calls for for inbound dealer, it, 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 for dealerships on the inbound side. So definitely that outbound, if you are a power user, it will generate tremendous calls back to the dealership, uh, you know, on caller ID. So this person just called me, as probably most of us do. You know, that would be an interesting poll question right there. Every time I miss a call, even if I don't know the number on my cell phone, I always have a tendency to call it back. And most people do. So guys, the outbound piece won't only really enhance your opportunities to sell cars, it will definitely create opportunities on the inbound side as well. And this is something new to the space right here. So this is what an outbound piece looks like. And keep in mind, the outbound piece is fairly simple. It can either be done directly from a CRM, it can be done from the employee's desk phone, and we also have the ability to do that from a cell phone now. So it's real simple. Right here, what we've done, uh, we've added a component to the, to the piece. Uh, historically, most dealers right now are clicking, meaning how many outbound calls did you make today? Ten, great. So, and we noticed that. So, what we did is we did a lot of monitoring of the outbound calls, and actually, how many of those outbound calls got in touch with somebody live. As we know right now, um, um, the majority of outbound calls get to a voicemail. Right now, it's averaging roughly um, what we noticed that about five. Excuse me, at about five to ten percent of all outbound calls actually reach a live person. So what we did is we added a new metric, and now we're actually monitoring and managing how many of the outbound calls actually reach a live person. And what we've noticed since we've just been managing this, and this is a new metric now that we can have in the store, it went average from 10, now we're up into 30%. Because once the employee understands that it's not all about just making outbound calls, it's about making these outbound calls that are going to be effective and actually talking to my prospects they have found ways to actually make the calls during times when people are picking up the phone. So pretty interesting, guys. We can break this down by department or, as you can see, by an employee. Right here is a quick example of one of our partners, which is eLeads. This is directly from the CRM. All they did is highlight the number that they chose to call. And this person is Joe. It looks like Joe's at the scene. And uh, what ha what's going to happen is a box is going to get populated. Uh, and then they just need to determine right here how they want to make that call. Do they want to populate that call from their cell phone, or do they want to populate that call from their desk? They make the option. They click the button. 
and all the work's going to be done. We're going to actually connect that call to that particular consumer that we're trying to reach. All right. Let me know if you have any questions on that, and we will uh, wrap it up. I see we're running a little bit behind. Uh, a couple call tracking best practices here, guys. Optimize and manage your data. Uh, optimize keyword conversions. Please, please integrate prospects into the CRM. Take it out of the hands of your rep and put it in the hands of technology. And also, as we just spoke on, please treat your outbound calling piece as you did following us on emails five years ago. Really important and will generate some good opportunities for you. So now we're going to move on to a recently launched piece. We've talked a lot about, right, okay, so Pogo, I mean, you went over all the stats. Hey, man, so, so how do we improve upon it? How do we benchmark it? How do we know where we are? So the CEO of our company, Reed Wakefield, who's been with the company for 10 years now, very smart, understands a lot about feedback loops in the gaming pieces. So our goal here is tying data to standards that will change results. Eliana, what type of application do you check on a regular basis? Are you a Facebooker? Tell me, tell me about you. Are you constantly on your smartphone looking at apps in Facebook or whatnot? I, I love Facebook. And anyone who's Facebooked me knows that I love Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, I'm, I'm on all the social networks. I'm on LinkedIn. You know, but Facebook is the one that, you know, if I go to a new restaurant... I will check in. You know, gotcha. okay, if I take good. a picture, I post. Okay, guys, yeah. those on the call again. Thank you so much for uh, attending. Another ten minutes, and then we're going to wrap it up with some questions. So these are the apps that I check. I really just put my Facebook on here. I promise I'm not a Facebooker. My <laughs> wife's a huge Facebooker. She's always posting pictures of the kids and looking at her on across the country and their kids. I'm a LinkedIn guy. I love LinkedIn. I find myself to be addicted to it from time to time. I must go on LinkedIn multiple times a day through my through my smartphone. And I'm also another app that I'm on all the time is Valley Junior Golf. My son Austin's a big golfer. He's thirteen. Plays in tournaments just about every weekend. So what I'm always doing is I'm always on Valley Junior Golf seeing if he's increased in the standings or decreased. And when he increases, he always gets a good positive green arrow, which means good job. When he hasn't done so well, unfortunately, he's going to get a red arrow. So our goal with Car Wars, guys, is to keep it real simple, easy to use. The stuff they show me is, is, is interesting and meaningful and keeps me engaged and curious to what's going on. So as we know, all dealers have a lot of cool pieces, but a lot of them are really challenging to use and fairly complicated. Our goal with Car Wars is to keep it easy to use, interesting, meaningful, engaging, and competitive. So I'm assuming all everybody on this call is above 17 years old. But think about this. Think about the days <laughs> where you were playing sports and you were in middle school and they were picking teams and you were the last one to pick, get picked. Now, that's not a good feeling, right? And people don't like being there. So when the social setting comes into play, People like to perform and like to compete. And one thing that we've created this game around is, is feedback loops. And feedback loops are tremendously important. And everybody on this call has those feedback loops, if not every day, close to it. Because I know what happens at a dealership on the 15th. Dealers are going, I had set a number of 100 cars by the 15th. I'm at 80. Hmm. Guess what they do? They go, what changes do I need to make? Do I need to cut budget? Do I need to increase budget to increase units? What do I need to do? I'm 20 units behind. So they're constantly thinking about how do I get the performance that I desire? So a feedback loop, this, it's a self-controlled system that allows feedback and self-correction and that adjusts its operation according to the differences between actual input and desired output. A real quick story here. So we just recently got a dog about four months ago. And unfortunately, it was the type of dog, every time you open up the door, the dog's going to shoot out the front yard across the road, and we have to chase, chase him for about literally 15 minutes. And I said, oh, my God, this is the last thing I want. So my wife, one day, when we talked about getting the invisible fence, she brought home a shock collar. I went, cool, this looks like fun. No. So at the end of the day, yes, we put the shock collar on the dog, when the dog ran out of the house, we gave him a quick little shock and told him to come. 
and he turned around and came to us. It was impressive. I said, man, why didn't we get this a couple of weeks ago? So it took us a couple of days, and we would go out front and train the dog. When he would step out of the yard, we would get a quick shot. And this is no joke, man. A week later, we could literally take the collar off the dog, and the dog would hang out with us in the front yard. Pretty cool, right? So that's a feedback loop for a dog. Let's look at a feedback loop that we can all relate to. So mine's a GPS. I'm on the road constantly traveling from city to city. And if I don't have a GPS, there's no way I would ever make it around. So think about the GPS. You put in your desired location, right? Boom. Press start. And it takes you there. If you get off the wrong road, it's immediately redirecting you to get back on the road you need to to end up at the destination that you want to be at. So this is a good example of a feedback loop that we can all relate to. You know, another one is real simple, right? We've been working out. I put on the scale. I jump on the scale. I go, wow, my workout work, and I, they're working. I've lost a couple of pounds over the last two days. So it's constant feedback that, that is quick, rewarding, and frequent. So we've implemented that exact same piece into the automotive business. As I mentioned earlier, very every GM and sales manager can recite how many ups, how many write-ups, how many demos. Unfortunately, very few can do it with phone traffic. And it has nothing to do with your ability. It has all to do with there's so many moving parts and there's so much going on that your arms literally aren't big enough to manage it. But I know if you could manage your business with the same uh, uh, efficiencies on the phone as you do in the front end of the business, things would change. So as you can see right here, you see the, the green arrows. This is going to give you a snapshot of exactly what you manage on all your ups every day at your store. So this is, this is what we're looking at right here, guys, is green arrows, positive. They're doing a good job. This Car Wars is going to be live streaming data that is going to be up to date in live time. So let's just walk through it real quick here. So as you can see, for this particular example, um, sales opportunities, this particular store had a 123 phone prospect calls for this time period. As you can see, they received a green arrow, which means their behavior is good. They're moving in the right direction. In the previous period, you only had 15 sales opportunities. So they've done a better job of having call to actions and a better job of marketing their inventory. Agent tried to set an appointment at 50% of the time. So as you can see, they have decreased by 1%, which is a red arrow. We also have the ability, which I'm going to show you here real shortly, to break this down by the employee level. And the other great thing here, guys, you have the ability to benchmark how you're doing in the entire marketplace against everybody else. So this store has actually done a fantastic job, even though they've decreased. They've only asked for an appointment on 50% of the prospect calls. But as you can see, all dealerships within the, within on the platform only requested an appointment at 36% of the time. So what this tells us is they are performing 14% better than all dealerships on this platform. This car wars is going to be based to ch truly change behavior. I know a lot of you guys have spent a lot of money on training, and there's some fantastic trainers out there that absolutely do you know, just a knockout job, and there's no doubt about that. But at the end of the day, what we have seen is once that trainer leaves, you will slowly transition back to normal standards. We are very focused and being very aggressive about helping you guys create the standards on the phone that you have worked so hard creating the standards within the showroom. Check this out. This is great stuff right here. We talked about soft and hard appointments. So appointment was set at 39% of the time. You see the red arrow? This is a, this is a hard appointment. 39% of these people out of the 50 set a hard appointment, which is down 4%. So as we know, when the manager calls back and confirms an appointment, the show rate increases by about 20% to 25%. We're going to lock load and hand deliver the hard appointments to the dealer so the dealer now has the ability to call the consumer back and confirm the appointment. As you see down below, 
the dealer set a soft appointment with no specific day and time at 52%. Imagine if your individual employees are managing their business on a daily basis with green and red arrows. This gets them engaged, it creates the social setting, and again, nobody wants to be picked last for the kickball game. Another little snapshot of positive reinforcing behavior. As we know, they connected to a qualified agent at 61% of the time. They've actually decreased on this by 8%. So at the previous time frame when we were managing this, they were connecting uh, qualified agents to prospects at 69% of the time. And as you can see down below here, guys, this is just the average of, of how long it took them to connect to a qualified agent. But look at this. Something's going on, right? This is easy to fix. As AJ said earlier, he went from roughly 20% 20, 20, 20 asking for the appointment to 40%. The only way to change data is to know it and to manage it. So now we quickly know that it's taken us 13 seconds longer to get our prospects in touch with a qualified agent. How do we fix it? How do we monitor it? You can determine on a daily basis if you're making improvements or not with green or red arrows. A couple of things that we're also going to do with this feature is we're going to send missed opportunity alerts. Uh, we have three ways to send missed opportunity alerts, either one via cell phone, via email, or we have the ability to send richer data into the CRM. The car wars data that we push into CRM is going to identify if the appointment was requested, and we're also going to identify if the appointment was accepted. What we've noticed on the alerts, our alerts are going to come uh, with caller's name and information, and we're going to transcribe the last 90 seconds of that call due to the fact that we have found that's where the meat and potatoes are. If you want to hear more of that call, uh, you will have the ability to simply click on the icon and listen to the entire call. And hey guys, as far as sending the alerts out right now, you know, there's a, there's a couple of guys doing a really good job of that in the space right now, which I'm sure you're familiar with, which is going to be call source with their deal favor piece, and also call review who's doing an excellent job with sending alerts out. And part of the reason of these alerts out is to mimic what dealers have done in showroom to, to, to create great performance, which is if somebody's going to walk in the showroom, they always have the manager come over to try to recoup that lost opportunity into a prospect. And obviously it works because the majority of dealers have been doing it for, for many, many years. And we want to give you the same opportunity to, to uh, save those lost prospects on the phone as well. This is one last report we're going to look at, and I'm about to hand it right back over to you. Um, as we talked about the follow-up on inbound calls are going to be more important as we move forward. This is just a quick snapshot of what happened for this particular store. This is going to be a daily or weekly report that you can monitor. It's going to give you all of your ad sources. It's going to determine how many sales prospect calls that each ad source is producing, how many times the appointment was, was requested, how many times that appointment was firm, how many times it was soft, and then the, a, a new metric that, that we encourage all of you guys to manage to. Did they follow up? Did somebody at my store actually follow up with this inbound lead or not? And as you can see, the store is uh, doing a relatively uh, nice job on the follow-up. The car wars, it's no special attention or data required. All of the filtering, tagging, identifying, and scoring takes place on our side, right? You guys have way too much to do. Check carwars.com or our mobile app for real-time results and scoreboard. Also, um, one of the guest speakers uh, next week, which is Jerry Tebow, we've also uh, partnered with Jerry on this on, on, on this car wars deal. He's actually going to be... Uh, doing some professionally coached calls for us. So he's going to monitor five calls and professionally coach them and then send that back to the dealership so all the associated dealerships can listen to those calls and try to learn. Weekly results and performance data gets emailed automatically. And at the end of the day, guys, this is going to be the scoreboard. As you can see, two dealers are competing right here. Um, but the key here is it's all about the people, right? It's all about creating standards within your team and sustaining those standards over time. Do they come with the little superhero outfits? <laughs> they do. They do. This, this little superhero right here is the guy who came up with the game. 
and <laughs> just a great guy that I report to by the name of Reed Wakefield. Okay, hey, check this out, and then I'm going to hand it over to you. So as you can see right here, so Marcus requested an appointment, right? Good behavior. We want people to request an appointment, and for requesting that appointment, he received eight points. As you can see, Carolyn connected on an outbound call. So she made an outbound call. She actually talked to somebody live, and she got rewarded for eight points. There's just one more thing I want to touch on here. Since we're all about encouraging positive behavior, at any time an employee, and each employee will also have their own gaming page, uh, at any time Marcus McGee has the ability to click here, catch up, and we're going to produce we're going to list things that Marcus can do that will enhance his business and his performance. And most of those enhancements are going to be reaching out to missed opportunities and making outbound calls to earn points. So we're really focused on helping the dealer world get their arms around the inbound calls and create the standards with the phone traffic that they've done a fantastic job of creating with all inbound traffic. And there we are. All right. Hogo, are. thank you so much. That was filled with a lot of information. A lot. Not just about Car Wars, but all of that information from the data that you collected from over 2 million sales calls. That was, that was really, really impressive. And I want to thank you for such a really well thought out presentation. So, guess what, everyone? Now it is time for question and answers. But before we get to that, some of you were here early enough to hear me mention it, and some of you weren't. But I wanted you to know that at the beginning of the webinar today, I told everyone that Century Interactive is giving away a great prize to one lucky attendee. Just one of you will win it. And it's going to be 60 days of Car Wars, which is a $3,000 value. $3,000, dude. It's a totally cool, cool prize. And yeah, it includes all that stuff, inbound and outbound call tracking, website tracking, call categorization, missed opportunity, alerts, live scoring. Just the, it's, it's amazing, as you just saw a, a small snippet of what it can do for your dealership. So it's totally cool. All you have to do is answer a simple question. It's actually a pretty hard question, but you know, hey, for a $3,000 prize, you know, <laughs> we couldn't make it too easy. Okay, so I want you to get ready, get at your keyboards, get ready. I'm about to ask a question. First one to write in the correct answer wins this awesome prize today. All right, so get ready. The question is, how does a feedback loop improve performance? We're looking for a very simple phrase. How does a feedback loop improve performance? performance. And hopefully some of you will remember the, um, the uh, example he gave about the, the GPS. You know, maybe that will help you come up with, with the correct answer. So how does a feedback loop improve performance? So we have some answers coming in. And uh, I don't see <laughs> the correct answer yet. Although somebody did write in with a shock collar, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're still looking. I don't have the exact answer, but um, Pogo, I'll read you the answers I have, and you can tell me if any of them, because they're not the exact answer that you gave me. But uh, Hey, Aliana, I'm going to let you take the closest one. <laughs> um. Oh, someone is so close, but they didn't get it. Uh, okay, Let's well, give I'll... it to them. Let's give it to them. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You, you guys have some really great answers. It's just not the one that I was given, so I, I apologize. Um, but I will say this. Before we get to that, we did have a really interesting question. Steve wrote in. He said, our phone system is antiquated, and it will cost about $40,000 to update it. And it won't integrate with our CRM. How much of your Car Wars service would we not be able to utilize? So, in Great. order to, could, I'm sorry, Pogo, I was going to say, in order to really utilize Car Wars, you really need the phone system to be integrated with the CRM? You know, you do not. You do not need the phone system integrated with the CRM, but please keep in mind there's no hardware with anything we do. 
no matter what phone system you are using, we can lay on top everything we talked about. It's a piece of cake, no matter what your phone system is. We can do the web analyzer, the inbound, the outbound, and push all that data to the CRM. Okay, great. Steve, I hope that helps you out. And guess what? We actually do have a winner. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Yes, we do. Uh, the winner is... Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let me just make sure. Yep, it's Dean Miller is our winner. And the correct answer was provides immediate feedback and helps the salesperson to go in the better direction. So, nice. Dean Miller, thank you so much for playing. Actually, go ahead, Dean. <laughs> rock on it. Now we're supposed to, like, clap and do a little happy dance. Dean, thank That's you right. so much. Um, let me see. Dean, what is your... Um, What's your dealership that just won 60 Days of Car Wars? Can you write in and let me know? And I want to thank everyone. We had a lot of people getting in on this one. So thank you so much. We love the, the interaction with all of you. And this is Moberly Motor Company, Moberly Motors. So Dean Miller from Moberly Motors, you did an awesome job today. I'm sure the people over there are going to really love Car Wars for 60 Days. So I'm excited to hear how you, and I'm just curious, Pogo, what's the feedback been like from dealers experiencing and participating in Car Wars? You know, it, it's, it's been great, and what we've been surprised at is at the sales level, the engagement that the sales team has with it. Of course, it makes the managers happy because it really gives them uh, a, a structure to, to manage and to monitor their sales guys, but the great thing about it has been how engaged and how active the sales organizations have been with it, and we know when the sales teams get active and engaged and compete, we know the byproduct of that. So it's been it's been it's been excellent, and, and the dealers have been very happy with the results so far. I bet it's like it's like a double whammy. You you improve and you have fun at the same time. Make it a little game out of it. I love it. Okay, I do want to get to some more of these questions. I know we're over time, so I thank everyone for sticking around. But some of these questions are really really important, and I want to make sure that we get them answered. So you ready, Pogo? Um, I'm ready. Next question comes to us from Andrew. He says. So are you saying that the number of superpages.com, for example, will appear differently to every user or just on our website? I, this goes back to one of your, um, your earlier yeah. slides, you know, where you were showing yeah. where all the people were coming from. Yeah, so um, uh, the number will dynamically change on the website. So each, each unique user will be assigned a unique toll-free number. So for an example, if I'm on the site the same time you are, uh, both of us will have different unique toll-free numbers from each other. So each particular unique IP address will be assigned a unique toll-free number. Great. Andrew, hope that helps you out. Okay, and Dean wrote in, uh, Dean, the winner actually, he wrote in earlier, he says, do I understand this right? The call source slash call bright push the call straight into the CRM tools? So is it like dealer yeah. socket? So Yeah, I mean, it, Dean, it may look a little different, but for sure, man, CallSource and CallBright have the ability to push that audio file, name, and phone number into the CRM. Absolutely. Okay. Andrew wrote in. He says he wants to know, do you have to use a voice IP? I know. Andrew, we're going to get back I, to you on I'm that not, one. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that question means. If you could give a little bit uh, uh, deeper, some more details, I think we can get that answered. Okay. Andrew, we might have to take that one offline, but we'll get you an answer. Um, AJ wanted to know, is this done with software or are the calls live monitored? And that's a great question because you told us you monitored 2 million calls like during a short period of time. Nationwide, yeah, so, so how does that work? So right now, we we have three uh, three hundred monitors. Um, we 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 actually have a unique piece that uh, we have patented called the human attic piece. So it's a filter through humans that they actually use a software piece to identify all this information. So it's 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 it's, it's computer and humans, human attic working together to to populate all that data. Wow, that's a lot. 
Okay. And I'll tell you, if I had, if we had a little bit more time, I did have the slides in there that really spelled out how all that gets done. So maybe at a later time, we can uh, do a deep dive on that, on how that, what that looks like and how it works. Oh, okay, great. Well, there you go. And um, let me see. I want to make sure I get all of these answered. Um, uh, next question is from Sean. Sean, Sean's question is, that uh, piece where, um, and this was a few slides back where you showed, you know, where the green hours were and the red hours are, mm -hmm. is that for salespeople to see or is that for managers? Yeah, so that piece right there, um, that can be for managers to see. Um, keep in mind, each individual sales rep will have their own unique page as well. So this was just, this was all the data that was pushed up from this one store. Um, the salesperson has the ability to look at his own stats and data with green and red arrows as well. And do keep in mind, each sales associate will be, uh, they'll be earning points throughout the day and every day, and they will know exactly how many points that they generated for the day, and they will also understand why they've missed opportunities to earn points. Oh, it shows how they how they missed opportunities to lose points too. Yes, so oh, they'll I didn't determine see that. that they had an opportunity to set an inbound to ask for the appointment on the inbound sales call, and they did not. So what will happen in that situation is if the sales rep had the opportunity to ask for the appointment and he did not, we're going to send an alert out. The dealership can determine if he wants that alert going directly to that sales rep, and if he does, then that sales rep will be alerted. He'll have the opportunity to make an outbound call and to re-execute with that prospect to try to convert him into an appointment. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, Sean, I hope that answers your question. If you certainly have a follow-up question, please don't hesitate to write it in. Okay, Wade has a great question. He says, how much are you relying on the sales rep to fill in the info? I mean, mm. that's no. what we want to know. <laughs> we want to know. It's okay. not you know, they have a lot to do. And yeah. like you said before, maybe they don't want to put in some of the info because maybe they don't want to oh. have to follow up on it. <laughs> well, the sales rep's not going to have to enter any data. There's only one piece of data that we would like the sales rep to enter, and that's going to be his employee ID code, for an example, so we can identify who took that call. If that sales rep does not enter that employee ID code, then we are going to actually listen to that call, of course. We're going to identify what sales rep tick, took it, and then we're going, to, we're going to give that sales rep credit for taking that call. So as far as all of that other data goes, the sales rep has to enter nothing, zero, nothing. We would like for them to enter their employee ID code, which will source that call back to that employee. But if the employee does not enter the employee ID code, we're going to enter that code for him. Other than that, there's nothing else that the employee or the dealership needs to do. Okay, well, I hope that answered your question. And, okay, and if it didn't, and if it didn't, guys, if I'm not if I'm not uh, creating clear clarity with these answers, please let's just let's just uh, deep dive it after this call, and we can stay on the phone as long as we need to. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know what? We are way past the time, but I do want to thank everyone for their questions, their feedback. It's always so important to us, and we really want to say thank you to everyone for being here today. And Pogo, thank you so much for a great presentation as well. Uh, th thank you so much, and the folks at Dealer On, and a special thanks to everybody who attended. <laughs> Great. I uh, want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. Today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars to view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars, too. Also, at the conclusion of today's webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out, because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. And today we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also win some Google Prizes. Now, invitations are going to be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, Seven Phone Skills Guaranteed to Make You Money, with the president of Phone Ninjas, 
Jerry Tebow, the original phone ninja himself, is going to share the seven phone skills that he teaches to dealerships all over the country. And they've proven to make a swift and dramatic difference in their sales. And you just can't afford to miss this one. So if you see the phone as an essential sales tool, well, then I guess we'll see you next week. This will be another Can't Miss presentation by your friends at DealerOn. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And we have some really awesome webinar subjects planned for this year. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, please contact me directly. I'm all over the place. You'll find me anywhere. Ask for me by name. My name is Eliana Raggio. I love hearing from you. And you can also track me down online or email me at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And we hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one.